Hello folks, welcome, welcome again to my uh, next episode. Today we are talking about the war in Russia. Uh, welcome, welcome, thank you, thank you for joining me. And uh, please feel free to subscribe, comment, share, hit the bell icon so that you can get all notifications whenever I upload something new. Yes, today we're talking about Russia, the war in Russia, the war in Ukraine. And uh, my position is that Russia is gonna win this war. So, so what's happening, folks? Uh, so, well, 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 you see, the war been going on now for a while. It started, uh, it started in Feb, I think, Feb, March, not sure. And uh, we've been bombarded by, by all sort of talking heads in the media telling us what's going on with the war and whatever. And... Uh, <laughs> who's winning and who's losing and who's to blame and whatever. I'm not really interested right now into who to blame for this war. Um, but I'm just going to focus myself on the issue of whether Russia is going to lose this war or not as the Western media is busy telling the viewers all over Europe and the US and probably Canada as well that russia is losing this war i totally disagree but again in, in in any case shout out to to the uh, policy analyst uh, jeffrey Sachs uh, on his latest video on youtube you can check it out titled russia is is not gonna lose the war yeah, he touches on a few points that are different what i'm talking about but the sentiment is pretty much the same <laughs> In order for me to look at the war in Russia and its outcome, which I think Russia is going to win it, and I'm very confident that Russia is going to win, I have to go back to the issue of, uh, go back to the war in Syria, which is still ongoing, uh, but uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, President Bashar al-Assad has won the war. So... It, the war in Syria is actually important for me because this is the war that made me interested in international relations and uh, led to me following international relations very closely. And it is because of this war that I started calling the BS by the Western powers and the Western media. <laughs> yeah, in any ways. So listen, check this out. Um, the war in Syria still ongoing but the syrian government has has won it they basically won this war in 2018 2018 2020 russia withdrew their troops earlier this year because they wanted to move their troops to ukraine um, but it's still being fought at several fronts 
Um, and this war includes the Syrian armed forces under the leadership of President Bashar al-Assad uh, and, and, uh, and his domestic and international allies that would include uh, <laughs> that would include Iran um, and uh, what's the screw from Lebanon now uh, I forgot their name Hezbollah, yes, and Russia. I mean, but Russia has withdrew, obviously, and they are fighting against uh, so-called rebel groups, which are basically terrorist groups, to be honest, um, like the Free Syrian Army, uh, some Salaf, Salafi jihadist groups, including Al Nusra Front, which is a, a chapter, a Syrian chapter of Al Qaeda, Tahrir Al Sham, and some mixed Kurdish forces, which are are not terrorist groups, but it's still for another day. Um, and that also includes the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, also known as ISIS or ISIL. Um, and so at the peak of this war, which was around 2014-2015, uh, um, the violence in the the violence was 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 hectic. In Syria at the time, but right now the violence has diminished, and uh, and as I've said, the Syrian government has basically won the war, which by extension means that Russia has won the war. Um, and if I say that Russia has won the war in Syria, I mean to say that Russia won the war in Syria against NATO, against Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, Israel. And against a litany of terrorist organizations um, and mercenary armed forces and foreign fighters who have been supported, funded, trained, and have receiving logistic support from mostly the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Arabia. So, it's it's the facts are that Russia has won the war in Syria against NATO. That's basically what the fatal the facts are, and this is a war that has lasted more than eleven years, and Russia won it, and so that that's that issue of the Syrian war is very important for us and is very instructive in terms of what's going to happen in Ukraine. I mean, there are a few differences that are important, but the outcome is going to pretty much be the same. What's important for us to note is that the CIA actually began weapons delivery to Syrian rebels and Syrian terrorists as early as 2013. Um, and even though we do not know the exact figures of how much these weapons were worth, um, because we know that um, CIA black ops operate, I mean, budgets are, are notoriously difficult to quantify. They're always under wraps, including the Department of Defense black ops. It's hard to, to quantify how much money these people were spending in spending these sometimes illegal actions. But it is estimated that the CIA spent one billion dollars a year to arm these anti anti government forces in Syria. A one billion annually, folks, being spent by the CIA, and that's the 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 the. the the money that is being spent that you, you don't hear about in the news. And then we go on to, to the money that is approved by Congress, like in 2014, the Senate voted 78 to 22 to approve 400 millions in arms delivery to the Syrian uh, rebels and terrorists. Um, the same thing passed 273 to 156 in the House. Um, the following year, just 2015, Congress also approved an another 500 million in weapons delivery and support. Um, and uh, in 2016, the US sent close to 300,000 pounds of ammunition <laughs> to Syrian rebels. Uh, and, and they also sent a number of RPG, RPG-7 launches. They sent some uh, 9, 9M-11M uh, wire-guided anti-tank missiles. They also sent some Factoria launches, uh, which are launch tubes that are used to fire the 9M 
11M missiles. They send some PK PK machine guns. They send AK-47s and DHKs. They actually they were actually sent th- hundreds of thousands of weapons, missiles, missile launchers, ammunition between the years uh, 2015 and 2018. <laughs> and was, it's actually quite interesting actually, when, I, when, I, when I realized that uh, in 2615, General Lloyd Austin, who is the current Secretary of Defense in the U.S., was at the time heading the U.S. Military Central Command, and he appeared before the Senate Armed Services Committee, which was... Which was um, led at a time by the known war monger and neocon John McCain. And so General Lloyd Austin made statements about um, made statements about how it is important for them to send more arms to to Syria because um, in order for them to dispose this criminal known as Assad. Um, <laughs> Uh, John McCain, I mean, a, a, a well-known warmonger in neocon, visited Syria in 2013. He, he spent some time with some rebel positions and spent some time also where the U.S. troops were stationed. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite insane because it's the same stuff now is happening with now. Uh, with Lindsey Graham, who is now the the heir apparent of the Mwanga in chief in, in in John McCain, and he's also now working lyrically on 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 TVs and, and radio stations, uh, telling the people, the U.S., the American people, how much how much the American citizens and American taxpayers need to fund this war in in Ukraine. Similar way to what was happening in Syria, it's actually quite insane. Um, there were times like in 2014 when John McCain called for more troops to be sent in Syria. Um, 2016, John McCain again called for U.S. airstrikes in Syria. Um, um, it's, I mean, September 2015. And then, okay, they, okay, they, oh yeah, September 2016, that's when Russia decided to, to use armed forces in Syria. And it is at this time when actually the war in Syria um, changed in terms of the direction and the outcome that the war was going to have. Before Russia sent their troops to Syria, the fact that uh, Bashar al-Assad was going to lose the war was almost a foregone conclusion. I mean, he, like, Bashar al-Assad was losing territory at a rapid rate until this stage. And uh, there were some rebels and terrorists who were actually studying to, to, who were reaching Damascus, the capital of Syria. And uh, <laughs> the Russian intervention began in 2015, 2015, September 2015. It began with some Russian air and missile strikes that targeted ISIS um, the Army of Conquest in Al Nusra. And the Free Syrian Army. <laughs> so, with the entrance of the Russian forces in the Syrian conflict, we saw an increase in Western propaganda against both Russia and, Syri- and the Syrian government. And uh, the war propaganda rose and rose until it reached fever pitch levels when Russia and the Syrian government liberated Aleppo from terror. You remember, remember when Aleppo was liberated? <laughs> I still have a vivid uh, memory of when Aleppo was liberated, uh, about how from the BBC to Sky News to CNN, Fox and everyone else was saying, look, the sky is falling. Russia and Syria are killing civilians. They are bombing hospitals and schools. By the end of the, by the end of this, Aleppo will be no more. All bullshit, obviously. I mean, you can go visit Aleppo right now. There's peace. People are thriving. 
people are living their day-to-day -day lives. The only thing that that entire thing was about was the fact that the West was upset at the fact that Assad was winning the war. You can always... In 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 a in a in a one to one fashion, relate that the West is losing a war, and the rate at which they are pushing propaganda on that war. Because the West never uses propaganda in wars that they are winning. This is why the West right now is con like in the war that they that they have been involved in for a number of years in Yemen. They, they bomb hospitals, they bomb school, they kill children, they kill women. And none of that is on the news. Because they and their partners like Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia are winning that war. Um, you hear nothing about all of the so-called human rights violations. So whenever, whenever you hear anything about schools being bombed and... Uh, and, and, and hospitals and civilians and children and women just know that the West is losing that war. It, it can be almost certainly guaranteed that it has nothing to do with, 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 with human rights violations and everything to do with the fact that the West is losing that particular war. And that was what was happening in Syria at the time and that is actually what's going on um, that's been going on in 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 Ukraine. I, I still have vivid memories of <laughs> the day where uh, there was this little boy in Aleppo that was used by the US media as a propaganda prop and US and UK media. And the story goes that, oh, apparently he survived a Russian attack and his entire family was killed. And, he, and then there he was sitting there in an ambulance with dirt covering his whole body and you had some female BBC journalists crying on live television. Guys, you said they can't make this shit up. Crying about how 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 these barbaric Russians are killing families in 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 in, in Syria. That very same week <laughs> I saw a video of a boy that was being slaughtered in the back of a baggy by the same terrorists that they were funding. And this story was not on any of these TV stations because these terrorists were funded by them. I actually, like, the, 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 that, the, that picture of that boy who, was, who had his, cut, his head cut off using a table knife by these uh, terrorists, I'll never forget that picture. I'll never forget that footage. Um, they took him and they were saying, oh, I saw the sending us boys now. He no longer has soldiers in real men he now he's sending us boys they took him he cried for mercy and he said can you please shoot me instead and they said no we're not gonna shoot you we're worse than isis they took him they put him at the back of, of the of the baggy or what is called in the u.s a truck they, they just they slot they, they just cut his throat as if he was a goat or a, a chicken I, I and the and, and and the Western media said nothing about this. Anyways, and then there was a story of the white helmets, which is which we know <laughs> were Western paid actors, pretending to be to be aid workers saving survivors out of guys. Like I was following this war actually on a daily basis. I think what can be said for sure about the war in Syria is that. Is that the West <laughs> did win the propaganda war, of course. They always win the propaganda war because the, the West, the, because the, we, the media in the West has lost all ability to hold people in power accountable. And, and once a war breaks out, which the Western power supports, the media in an almost unanimous fashion, loses their ability to question authorities, loses their ability to, to ask factual-based questions, um, ask difficult questions, verify facts, uh, uh, interview the other side, 
let the people decide which one is the truth. They've, they've lost all ability to, 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 question, to question authorities. And uh, the West won the propaganda war and Russia <laughs> did win the war and by extension. NATO lost the war. And it seems to me that they haven't they haven't let the the West, the US, NATO, and their and their satellite states have actually they haven't learned a thing from that. Um, so as soon as they lost this war, there was less and less war propaganda. Um, and then and then obviously they moved on to more to other shiny objects that they that they had to move on to. And the problem with the West that I've seen so far and in my interest in general in international relations is that they never learn a thing you know how it's going to start you know how it's going to go and you know how it's going to to end and they have no ability to, of self-introspection they have no ability of self-correction and the same can be said about the media in the west from BBC, Sky News, The Guardian, The Daily Mail, um, France 24, um, DW in, in Germany, uh, CNN, Fox, um, MSNBC. Uh, because every media outlet in the US, they might have their differences with regards to left, right, whatever. But when it comes to being warmongers, they are unanimous. It's actually quite a shame. Now, the, the Western media is busy, is busy telling the, the wider West community and Western public that, oh, look, Russia is losing the war. Anytime now, Russia will retreat and defeat. Anytime now, uh, Vladimir Putin is, <laughs> is going to lose. Folks, these people are intentionally obtuse. They are actually ignorant on purpose. They, they imagine that the war in Ukraine can be decided by some short-term military movements that are happening currently or in a number of days or in a number of weeks. They also imagine, in error obviously, that, that, that short-term military gain or short-term military losses of either party in this war can, con can, can conclusively tell us what's going to happen <laughs> with regards to the outcome of this war. They imagine that if Russia uses a city that Russia previously held in Ukraine, or that this means that Russia is losing the war. They must also think that this, this war will be decided this year, or perhaps <laughs> by next year. You can't make this shit up. And, and folks, the reason why Russia will win this war is that the West has not considered that this war, just like the one in Syria, will take 10 to 15 years. They have not thought about this possibility and learned any lessons from the Syrian war, or Afghanistan, or end their losses in Syria. And because they have not applied their minds to the possibility that this was going to take 10 to 15 years, this basically guarantees a Russian victory in this war. Here are the facts. Russia is not just fighting Ukraine, of course. Russia is fighting Ukraine and the West. And the fact, the fact that if it, was not, if it was not for the Western weapons and Western logistical support um, and Western sanctions, this war would be, would be over. Because Ukraine doesn't have enough capacity to fight this war without the Western big brother backing them. So basically then this war is between Russia and the West and any other <laughs> like, like suggesting that this war is between Russia and, 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 and Ukraine is, as I said before, being intentionally obtuse and just being intentionally misleading and lying to the people. The only scenario that I can think of by which Russia can lose this war, actually, 
is if Russia voluntarily withdraw from this war, which is not going to happen, or if the U.S. engages in this war, in an actual hot war with troops on the ground, which is obviously not going to happen. But you understand the fact that, that if U.S. troops were to be fighting in this war, that would mean that China would also be dragged into this war. And that would also mean nuclear weapons will be in play. And that means that, okay, if Russia loses, the U.S. loses also. also. Because if, if the U.S. enters this war by troops on the ground kind of situation, that would mean that nuclear weapons will be used. That means that the entire Europe will be um, a radioactive wasteland, including the entirety of, 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 of Northern America will be actually be a radioactive wasteland. No one wins. Okay? Everyone loses. And they know that that's not going to happen. And that's the only way that Russia is going to lose this war. So the only thing that continuing supplying weapons and missiles and all kind of functional support to, to, to Ukraine, what the only thing that it, it does, it's that it delays Ukraine's defeat because Ukraine will lose. It won't happen this year and won't happen next year either. I don't actually see it happening in the next five years either, but I do see it happening in the next 10 years. And if you felt to the fact that in the next 10 years, Russia might, I mean, China, that pardon, China might invade Taiwan. If, if China invades Taiwan in the next 10 years and the, the war in Ukraine is still ongoing, that automatically means that <laughs> the U.S. will no longer be able to support Ukraine at the rate that they are supporting. And, and it's not even a foregone conclusion that they'll be able to do it consistently in the next five years, even if China does not invade ta Taiwan. It just tells me that if, 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 if China invades Taiwan, that would mean that the West will have to, to be fighting wars at, in two fronts. And we all know what happens when we fight wars in two fronts. That's exactly how Adolf Hitler lost the war in the World War II. He was fighting Russia in the East and fighting the West on the West, and he lost. And that's exactly what's going to happen to the West if... Oh, my goodness. But also, data shows that, that, um, that they thought, okay, sanctions will cripple Russia. Wrong. Data shows that these sanctions have not crippled the, the Russian economy. In fact, if, we, if we're looking at the, at the history of, of Western sanctions of Russia, looking at Crimea, for instance, the, the sanctions on Russia with regards to the issue of Crimea resulted in Russia developing their light industry industries, especially their uh, agro-processing industry. And now Russia is self-sufficient when it comes to agro-processing and agriculture. And Russia is now among the top grain exporters in the world. Checkmate. Another thing that the West imagines is that if they stop by rushing gas and oil, this will cripple Russia. Again, false. Why is it false? It is false because Russia has others who are willing to buy their oil and gas. Who's willing to buy their Russian, Russian oil and gas? China? India? And on top of that, on top of the fact that Russia and uh, China and India are willing to buy uh, Russian and oil and oil and gas, is that China and India has a combined three billion people, while the EU only has four hundred and fifty million people, actually four hundred and forty-seven. So, if you were previously selling to four hundred and fifty fifty million people. And then you can no longer sell to that market, but instead you get a market that has 3 billion people. Who do you think wins? Also, <laughs> Europe has been a declining economic power in the past 50 years. And their decline has been more striking in the past 20 years, which means that, um, and, and Asia is actually where it's popping right now. Which, which means that Russia has little to nothing to lose by actually turning eastward because that's actually why it's popping. You must also understand the fact that China has the second biggest economy in the world. 
in India, the only European country that consistently has a larger economy than India is Germany. So you look at those facts that, that look at these two economies, which which China and Indian economy are probably like fifteen or twenty percent of the world's economy. I mean, seriously, folks, uh, if you're telling me that, and I also telling me that the West would be able to fund the war in Ukraine at the rate that they are doing it now, the the rate which which result in parity in war outcomes, will they be able to continue to fund this war in the, at the same rate in the next 10 years? The answer is probably absolutely not. And the question is, will the US be able to continue to fund this war using debt at the same rate as they are doing in the next, at, at the next um, whatever, uh, 10 years? The answer is absolutely no. Also, the people in Europe and in the U.S. are just tired of this shit. They are tired of spending money they don't have on these meaningless wars that have nothing to do with them. And they also... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm sure everyone has seen the unrest in Europe. I mean, the people in Europe have had it. The people in Europe have had it with their leaders. Absolutely had it. So, my... My chat is that is that since this war has entered the realm of its guerrilla, its, its guerrilla warfare, its urban warfare, its war of attrition, these are all military strategies that Russia is very well versed in, and these are military strategies that the West has struggled, consistently struggled in. And and looking at the history of, 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 of wars that both the Russia and the West have engaged in in the past 30 years, including Syria, including Iraq, including Afghanistan, history tells us that Russia will win this war. It's, it's actually, at this point for me, where it's actually absolutely unthinkable that Russia can lose this war. Outside of if the West is able to assassinate President Putin somehow, and they and they uh, um, station a Western stooge there, but outside of that, I don't see it happening. So, I think the question for me that the American citizens and American tech persons ask themselves is that. How 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 much longer are they willing to bleed, bleed cash, cash that they do not have, um, debt, to fund a war, and that they can't win, and to fund a war that they certainly will not win, and most importantly to find a war that has zero upside for them. That's really for me what the question is. And uh, and my my estimated guess is that in the next five to eight years citizens in this in this in this country citizens in the u.s and in 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 in, in europe i'm gonna say we've had this with this shit we can't do this and uh the leaders are gonna stop to spend money that people do not have to fund these endless wars in any case folks that's that for me <laughs> for now and uh, I want to hear your thoughts about my little rant that I just went on here what do you think thoughts comments questions queries disagreements don't forget to like subscribe Hit bell, but um, bell icon. But uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. The thoughts on this question of the war in Ukraine.